Hey everybody, Brittany here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over a tournament game, and we're not going to be going over uh, an opening today, because I'm actually playing in a tournament right now. So I ran home right after my last game, and I'm going to be recording this, and I'm going to be running back right after to catch my next game. So let's jump into uh, one of my tournament games from the past. And we are looking at a game that I played against Janani. This was game two in uh, the Guelph Pro Am. So e4 was played, e5, uh, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5. This is the Rui Lopez. We see a6, bishop to a4, and now b5, bishop to b3. So this is just a nor normal Rui Lopez where they played an early b5 instead, but this is all still fine. They just, you know, they develop normally. They can play bishop e7, then knight f6, then castles. Um, just be a little wary of some sort of early knight f6 where knight g5 might be possible. Uh, but it's not really the end of the world here. So they actually played knight f6, and if knight g5 here, they do have the move d5 as a response, so they're still fine here. Uh, but I just play d3 to just defend the e4 pawn, which is uh, what you normally do in these positions. You can also castle here too, uh, where castle is knight takes e4. There's always moves like d4 or rook to e1 here, and uh, losing the pawn is actually no big deal. Because you just gain, you just win the pawn back, uh, the e5 pawn back. Um, and then it's equal material again. And you get a little bit of initiative because black wasted some time to, to take the pawn. Um, so I played d3, of course, instead. Um, because that's what I was a bit more comfortable with. And this is still a good move. So h6 was played. And I don't think this is a great move. But we have to look at why it isn't from white's perspective first. Um, so... Let's let's get to uh, just a few more moves ahead, and we'll see why. So castles, bishop to c5, and now h3. My cats are going crazy right now. I don't know if you can see them. They're going crazy. Um, but h3. So h3 is actually more productive uh, than h6. But why is that? So the big thing here uh, to mention is that normally when you go for the c3 to d4 break, uh, there's a bishop g4. Whereas whenever black goes for d5 as a response, uh, we rarely ever go bishop g5. And this is one of the big reasons why h3 is slightly better. Of course, um, here, there's other moves that are better probably. I would say like a4. Uh, a4 looks really strong. And the reason why is because you're trying to provoke uh, black into pushing. And if they were to push, now something like c3 becomes even stronger. Uh, where you're just trying to uh, trade off the B pawns and open up the queen side because white has a better center. So if you can open up the position a bit more when you have more central control, you might have an edge at the end of the day. Uh, so, okay, bishop c5. I played h3 instead, uh, which is, you know, fine. This is uh, just a normal position. Rook e1, bishop to b7, and now c3. And here after c3, we can see what the idea here is. It's, uh, it's playing d4. So my opponent played rook e8. And I ended up uh, playing d4, which I think uh, wasn't necessarily the correct move. And the reason why I say that is because of what happens uh, with essentially the d-pawn and the e-pawn. So after d4, we can see that the e-pawn is actually weaker. And after bishop to a7, uh, it almost feels like we're provoked into playing d5 a bit too early. And why is d5 early? It's because their pawn is still on c7. So, for example, if their pawn was on c5, let's just say uh, bishop c2, knight a5, knight d2. Uh, these aren't good moves necessarily from both sides. There's better responses. Uh, and then c5 and then d5. Okay, this is actually really good for us. Of course, don't mind how we got here, but just talking about the position. However, when their pawn's on c7 here, uh, and after a move like um, d5 and the knight moves away... Uh, knight a5, bishop c2, now there's c6, and we don't keep a pawn on d5, and they actually break down our structure very quickly, and can go for, for example, d takes, there's actually bishop takes and d5, and, and black's just better here, so that's something to worry about, uh, I played bishop c2, which I kind of respect, because it does cover the uh, e4 pawn, uh, unfortunately, there's two ways actually maybe even three that uh, black can play they can play d6 they can play d5 and they can play e takes d4 personally i really like the idea of bishop uh, e takes d4 takes and then there's also this like knight b4 move uh which just looks like a killer right because now 
uh, white's going to be, or black's going to be getting the bishop pair in an open position. And this is a very open position. And again, I would say um, white's in trouble here. Or again, they can go for a d5, which is probably the uh, strongest response. And after d5, it's not really easy to say what to do. For example, if we were to take on d5 here, uh, the best response is queen takes d5, where all of their pieces are just coming to life. This feels like a marshal where they didn't sacrifice a pawn. And black's actually really close to just winning in this position because of how bad the position is. White's pieces are all undeveloped and the position's opening up. This is not a good sign. My opponent, however, played d6, which is also a good move. The whole point is if d5, then we can still go into those variations with like knight e7 and c6, and uh, white's still in trouble. I played bishop to e3 instead. So after bishop to e3, there's not really a good way to defend the e4 pawn after e takes d4, because, well, now there's two pieces attacking, and if I were to take with a piece on d4, for example, bishop takes, which is what I played, uh, they're able to just take on d4 and still take on e4 no matter what, which is exactly what they did. And in this position, it's just dead lost by this point. Uh, this is very, very bad. And the reason why is because, well, position's opening up, they're up a pawn, and they have the bishop pair. So bishop pair in an open position is an advantage. Being a pawn up is an advantage. Having more active pieces is also an advantage. Uh, when there's that many things going right for black, you have to ask, uh, is the position even worth playing on? I did. Uh, however, I played knight to c3. They took, took and played queen to uh, f6 here. And uh, they're looking to, for example, just take on, on f3. Uh, I played a4, just trying to play on. It's it's really difficult to just come up with anything at this point. Uh, rook takes e1, queen takes e1, bishop takes f3, g takes f3. And actually, my opponent blundered with uh, queen takes f3, and white is now winning in this position because black got a little careless. But what can white do to win the game? White can play the move bishop to e4, uh, and what this does is it attacks the queen and the rook. And probably the best response, for example, is rook e8, where now you can play bishop takes f3, rook takes e1, rook takes e1, and we're just up a rook here. Uh, and obviously if queen takes h3 or something after bishop to e4, uh, we just take the rook and there's no worries of any checks because we can just bring our bishop all the way back and this is just completely winning. There's there's just no hope in this position left. Uh, however, I didn't find that. I played queen to e4 instead, trying to go for like a, a mating attack. Uh, and obviously that's not really a good idea here uh, because, well, bishop e4 just won. Uh, but it did save the game regardless because after uh, queen takes and bishop takes, the rook had to move, rook to e8. And now I have this move bishop c6, and I can win the b5 pawn. And that's what happened. So rook e2, a takes b5, a5, rook a5, bishop to b6, rook a a check, king h7, rook e8 takes and takes. And in this position, uh, my opponent offered a draw. I waited a little bit, and then I agreed because, well, uh, unfortunately, I'm still down a pawn and... Uh, or sorry, no, I'm not down a pawn, but um, this position feels like it's going to be a bit easier for black to play because of king g6, king f6, whereas it might take me a little bit longer to get into the action here. Um, but that's just a, a very quick observation. Uh, of course, there's a, a lot more we could discuss about this game, but I think we covered the main points, uh, and that is mainly uh, watching out in the opening, uh, for example, of... Uh, playing an early d4 where you might not even be fully ready. So d4 here, I would consider to not really be the correct move. But there's other moves that white can make. Uh, for example, there's knight bd2, and you can reroute this piece to uh, g3. And you can actually see that in the video I made on the Rui Lopez, uh, where I covered how to play that opening well. So that's a very common maneuver that you'll see there. Uh, and also, if we just go further, after d4... Uh, probably, again, I probably just have to play d5 where they get the full center, and I'm just slightly worse. But after the game with bishop c2, d6, and especially bishop e3, which just gives up a pawn, uh, the game's hopeless, and I should have lost it. Luckily, I saved it uh, against a high-rated opponent as well, and I drew this game. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully the cats weren't too loud for you, but that's okay. Um... If we hit 100 subscribers, I'll have my cat analyze the game instead. I'll just like I'll just hold them up and be like, meow 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 meow, and then like move 
anyway, yeah, okay. That I thought that was funny when I said it, but now that I realize that, that might be cringe. Um, I'll still do it if you want, but there's still the other goal of if we hit a thousand subscribers, I will be doing a 10 hour video on the Berlin end game. And I think as a joke, I'll call it a brief uh, overview of the Berlin end game because it's 10 hours. That's not brief, but okay. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys on Monday for another master game. Have a good one. Bye-bye.